Yo, listen. If by the time this video goes live right here, if Ten Hag's not sacked, I, United like United is not serious, bro. Like you're not a serious club. Like United was getting slapped around in Old Trafford. They call it the theater of dreams. Knock it off. The theater of nightmares. Like let's be real with each other. There's no more excuses. Bruno Fernandez is not to the level that he used to be at when he first joined Old Trafford. And at Manchester United, there's no plan. There's no vision. There's nothing. Boys, we're back at it again today with another reaction video, again with more A9 skills, and this video about Manchester United getting humiliated against Tottenham. Apparently, there's a lot of things that he has to say, and I have a feeling that, I mean, like, if it's going to be anything similar to the Barca video, uh, this is going to be uh, pretty spot on, so let's get straight into it. All right, let's go. I'm sick of people acting like this is normal, like this is just normal behavior, like, oh, there's still people out there that are like, oh, he needs time. He needs time. He needs time. Yo, listen, if, by the time this video goes live right here, if Ten Hag's not sacked, uh, United, like, United is not serious, bro. Like, you're not a serious club. Like, you got to, you, you, like, you stop it. You're not a serious club, man. Because let me explain something to y'all, man. Y'all, 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 we, we got to talk about a few things, right? Was today's a red card? Oh, the Probably Bruno Fernandez not. red Bruno card. Bruno Fernandez nah, it's a red card. slipping. The Bruno Fernandez red card was a red card 100%. Like, I don't care what anybody says. Um, this is not like me coming at skills for like not knowing the rules or anything, but literally that red card was a hundred percent a red card. And I'm gonna explain why, like right now, Bruno Fernandez, like completely, like he completely messed up. Like he went in straight leg to that Spurs player. And the fact that that was like, even considered not to be a red card is like, honestly, it's laughable. Like no matter what, like, I don't care if, if the cleat or the studs of the cleat or the boot, whatever you want to call it didn't completely make contact the intention behind it was you can honestly argue that it's violent conduct because it didn't even seem like he was going for the ball serious foul play is when you make is when you endanger the safety of the opponent while attempting to play the ball violent conduct is endangering the safety of the opponent without playing the ball like so you have no intention of playing the ball this could be argued as violent conduct. Let me show you the screenshot of an angle that Bruno Fernandes went into the challenge. Just like, just like, look at that. Just look at this angle right here. The, the studs don't fully make contact with the leg, with the Spurs player's leg. But like, it, look how straight Bruno Fernandes' leg is. Like, there is no intention of playing the ball here. Like, there, like he was nowhere near playing the ball. So him getting sent off here, it, there, there's just zero argument, zero excuse for it. All right, let's go back to the video. Oh, it's not, I don't even know if it's a red card, right? But at the end of the day, if he connects as well, it's it's a high tackle. Now, is it a red card? I wouldn't have given a red card for it. Is it. A red but card. This is football. You can't just keep blaming refs because the refs helped you last week. 100%. They hurt you this week. But let's talk about before the red card because United was getting slapped around in Old Trafford. They call it the theater of dreams. Knock it off. The theater of nightmares. Like let's be real with each other. This is not. This is not a. This is not a. And honestly, like a theater of nightmares. Theater of nightmares honestly represents. The, the stadium more and not even just the stadium but the whole team situation this is no more excuses no more excuses no more excuses i made a video last week and i talked heavily about this bruno fernandez is not to the level that he used to be at when he first joined old trafford and that is 100 percent facts like nobody can can no bruno fernandez not just for manchester united but even for portugal has been absolutely horrendous and skills is 100 percent right here Ten Hag brought nothing to this club that he was 100% true supposed to because at Ajax he played this beautiful pressing amazing football no. and at Manchester United there's no plan there's no vision there's nothing now let's let's start there what dude we're only a minute and 30 seconds in and in this guy and I say this guy like I don't know who he is. Skills is speaking absolutely straight facts. What has been happening at Manchester United uh, over the last couple of years under Ten Hag has been just an absolute disaster, an absolute not nightmare. And literally, the theater in the theater of nightmares, uh, as cringy as that might sound, right? Like everything that has been going on under Ten Hag, like nothing's working. The players aren't playing correctly. Like they're not putting out good performances. They're not getting good results. Literally they're like 12th in the league right now so the fact that people are still kind of trusting this guy after a couple of years i understand if it was one season maybe two seasons that we're a little over two seasons now like the, the it's it's i think it's too long because and, and the reason why i say this and i feel like skills is going to go into this in the video so i might just hold off on it but 
this is like Ten Hag's team. Like Ten Ten Hag has brought in the majority of these players into the team. But I'm going to wait a bit because I, he might talk about this. Whether Manchester United is playing Crystal Palace or Manchester United is playing Spurs, nothing changes. Usually when you watch football, managers change things up depending on the team that they're facing. If they're facing someone like Crystal Palace, that is a team that's close to relegation. They know they can go more offensive. They know they could play certain players. They know they might not need a defensive mid. They change things up. A different style of play. A, 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 a more exciting style of play. You don't get that with Manchester United. The same team that pulled up to play Crystal Palace, the same game plan, the same style, the same everything showed up to play Spurs. And Spurs said, you going to disrespect us and play us like we Crystal Palace? You going to play us like we're not a team that can end in top six? Let's show you what's up. And it if has. it wasn't for Timo Warner having worse finishing than me, and I can not I can barely kick a ball, right? My, have you seen me kick a ball, bro? If I kick a ball right now, I'm going to need another hernia surgery, okay? Let's just be real with each other, bro. Like, I, like it ain't even a joke no more, bro. Like, I could probably score the chances this guy misses. They put Timo Warner one-on-one with Onana so much, and he could not score. And I do want to say one thing, because I've been harsh on Onana for a long time. Onana, over the last two weeks for Manchester United, has been their best player. Like, he's actually made incredible saves. He's actually, his double save, I think it was against Crystal Palace. I think it was, was it against Crystal Palace, y'all. I think it was against Crystal Palace. That double save against Crystal Palace today, a couple one-on-ones against Timo Warner that he bailed them out. Um, he's just been pretty good for them. And you now look at the matches, okay? And let's break it down, guys, because we did this in the last video. We're going to do it again. You ready? They start the season off. They beat Fulham. Congratulations. Oh. Lose to Brighton, lose to Liverpool, beat Southampton, again, a team battling relegation. Um, the Energy Cup, we don't care about. Uh, they the tie to Crystal Palace. Cup. They go to the Europa League. They tie again. They go to, to they play at home against Spurs. They least, lose to Reno. Guys, taking out the Energy Cup. Let's not talk about the Energy Cup where they won 7 0 against Burns. Barnsley. Okay? One, two, three, four, five. In five games, they won one against Southampton, who had a red card. The rest have been losses or ties. Okay, let's talk about that real quick. All right, so this has been Manchester United's last couple of games, uh, or oh, at least since the start of the season. He's right. The one nothing win against Fulham. They lost to Brighton. Brighton are a really good team. Um, but this is a this is pretty upsetting for, for a team like Manchester United. They lost to Liverpool. They got smacked by Liverpool. Not even just like a regular. Like they got absolutely smacked. They beat Southampton, who just got promoted from the championship so this is not an impressive win at all but it was a good win to bounce back and now you're two and two so it's not it's not the worst thing in the world they beat barnsley seven nothing in the the energy cup <laughs> which is uh not impressive at all uh being a league one league two side tied against crystal palace really bad result tied to this this europa league tie was a really bad result and i wanted to make a video about this but this is a really, really embarrassing result for Manchester United, um, considering that that is insane. Honestly, it, it's genuinely crazy, but I'm not going to get into it because that should have been a separate video. And now they get embarrassed by Spurs, 3 nothing. So, and, and they currently sit 12th. They currently sit 12th in the league standings it's insane like it this is horrendous this is an absolutely horrendous team ten hag has been here for what three seasons now and you know what's crazy he played for 20 he played in the team that he tied 1-1 to so you would have assumed that he had some sort of knowledge or some sort of experience you know going into the game which he should have but and but they still ended up tying 1-1 chelsea is in fourth place arsenal third Man city second Liverpool first. Manchester United is in 12th place. They almost have the same amount of games played as points. Six games played, seven points. They have more goals scored on them than games played. They have less goals scored than games played. I didn't even realize that. That is 100% true. This is the table right now with Manchester United in 12th place. In six games that they played, they scored five conceded eight they conceded more goals than games played and they scored less than the amount of goals that or the amount of games that they've played so far um and they're currently sitting behind teams like brentford like nottingham forest this is really really concerning how could chelsea be in fourth place 
How could Fulham be in sixth place? Brighton, Spurs, Newcastle, Nottingham Forest, Brentford all be above you. And you're Manchester United. You're supposed to be one of the best teams in the Premier League and maybe even in the world. Manchester United fans sat down with me and said, Skills, this is not the old Manchester United no more. You need to stop living in the past. This is a new Manchester United. It needs to go through a rebuild. Once we get a defensive mid, we'll be a top five team. You got Casemiro. You turn him into a literal, ter one of the worst defensive mids in football now. Okay. Yo, that's facts though. That's so facts. You literally got a Casemiro that came straight from Real Madrid, one of the best CDMs in the world, and he became one of the worst players in the world so, since his move to Manchester United. And he was the best. Then you get Ugarte, who, when he signed for PSG, I thought he was going to be the signing of the summer. Did it I was just going to say that Ugarte was supposed to be the si one of the signings of the summer. He was supposed to pop off for Manchester United. Like, he was supposed to be the answer to Manchester United. Him and Xerxes were supposed to be the answer to Manchester United's prayers. Absolutely nothing from them. Ghosts. Didn't work out at PSG. Phantoms, comes to United, bro. And now he looks, now, now he's going to be trash at United. It's not a defensive mid problem. It's not. It's not a left back problem. It's, it's not, not a goalie problem. It's not nope. a center back problem. It's, it's an everyone problem. problem starting with the manager. Starting with the manager. Why? Because I said it in the last video. I'm going to say it again. These are his players now. This is his team now. We need to stop acting like this ain't his team. This is his team. Before we could say, well, he needs to adapt his style. Cool. Let's talk about it. The starting 11. All right. Here's the starting 11, lads. Ready? You ready for this? Starting 11. Look at this starting 11. Onana. He bought Onana. The loft was there. Martinez. He bought him. Delit. He bought him. The right back. He bought him. Mano was there through the academy. You got. He brought him. He bought him. Garnacho Academy. Rashford Academy. He bought him. Bruno was there. This is his team now, lads. You go to the bench really quickly. You go to the bench, right? Mason Mount. He brought him in. Holland. He brought him in. Erickson. He brought him in. Casemiro. He brought him in. Anthony. He brought him in. Anthony don't even touch the field no more, and they spent all that money on him. All I'm saying, lads, is enough is enough. Yo. Skills is spitting facts, bro. I don't understand how people actually hate on this guy. The, the most factual that I've ever heard anybody talking, like the most straight up that anybody has has talked here on YouTube. But I think because A9 Skills is just so neutral that he just spits straight facts. I definitely feel like I am the same way to most to most of the time when I talk about teams because I am neutral. Like I have a Manchester United like hoodie on, but or like a jacket on, but. I'm not a Manchester United fan. I have like I have a special place um in my heart for Manchester United uh for personal reasons that I won't get into, but like I haven't been like supporting them since I was a little kid or like I I'm not like going jumping up and down for United like whatever. Like I I support them in the pre in the Premier League and then like that's pretty much it. The same thing with Barcelona. Like I've been watching Barcelona I've been watching since I was a little kid, so I back them. I I've been backing them, you know, my entire life. And so from what I've seen from Manchester United, it was ever since I was a little kid, has just been, like, very, just, like, questionable. I mean, like, the last time I saw a good Manchester United was back when I was, like, a little kid, like, maybe 2007, 2008, like, around in the early 2000s, maybe. Um, and that was back when Ronaldo was in the team. But, yeah, like, I've said it before in the video. This is Ten Hag's team, dude. Like, he brought in the majority of the players to this club. So, like, it's not... A conversation of whether the players need to adapt to Ten Hag style or Ten Hag needs to, um, like instill like fucking like a specific tactic or some discipline into the players because the players already have like the the players already, um, they, they're here for a reason because Ten Hag wants them here and tag and they play under Ten Hag style and it 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 all is supposed to gel together but it's not and it doesn't and, um. Whether that's the player, we don't think that's the player's fault. I genuinely don't believe that's the player's fault. I don't think it's the player. I think it's the manager's fault because when you look at the Barca situation, when you look at, when you bring in a manager like Hansi Flick into a into a Barca team that is struggling in depth, that didn't win um, the the league last year, that had a lot of a lot of um, of pressure and controversy with Xavi. When you bring in a, a, a guy like Flick and he went seven and zero. Like, dude, it's it's in, like it's different. You, it's it, it's all about the. It, it starts with the manager. Yes, like the players have, like they have obviously they have. To, you have to take responsibility as a player. Like your performances on the field, like it's it's on you. But it starts with the manager, 
And what Ten Hag has been doing with this club, uh, I think is just wrong. And I've said it in previous videos, or I talked about it in the past on live streams or, or whatnot, that Ten Hag uh, is not the man to lead Manchester United to success. And I will stick by that until he proves me wrong. I don't care that he won like the FA Cup last year. That was not an excuse to keep Ten Hag another season. Absolutely not. Uh, I understand probably why they did that because they probably would have felt bad even though they've won uh, a title with him and they probably spent so much you know time and money by bringing in players that Ten Hag, wa Ten Hag wanted that they didn't just want to sack him right away. But at the end of the day, he should have been sacked last season. Um, this we should be seeing a completely new manager. We should be we should be seeing an absolutely completely rebuilt Manchester United with like a top tier manager, like a Zinedine Zidane, a, free, a Hansi Flick, like would be good for this team. Like it, just somebody that could be revolutionary. Ten Hag is not a revolutionary manager. Enough is enough. Ten Hag's got to go, bro. If I don't see Fob tweeting today, here we go. That Ten Hag is gone. <laughs> I'm not really sure what to say anymore. This is not a question of should Ten Hag be sacked. Ten Hag needs to go, like, tonight. He needs to leave. This is embarrassing. Uh, he should have been gone a long time ago. And I want to take it one step back, and I don't even want to bring this guy up. Everything Cristiano Ronaldo said was facts. United fans were I didn't like, even think oh, skills, man, he shouldn't have done that. He should, And I agree, he shouldn't have done that. But he loves your club, bro, and he did that out of love. And a lot of people thought he was doing it out of ego because he couldn't play no more. The facts are... Ronaldo saw something that just wasn't right. He saw something wrong with the manager. He saw stuff off the, wrong with the training ground, and he said it. And it needs to change because there needs to be someone that can come in and be successful in this environment. And right now, the environment is not really a, 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 a friendly place for any manager. But the facts are, you can't just continue with Ten Hag, and you can't just continue with him losing mad points because at the end of the day, this is a business, and Manchester United is a massive business, and their business needs to be in European football or around European football. And at the moment, the way this is going, now you just lost Bruno for three games. Explain to me how they're going to start getting points because they look terrible. He needs to go, y'all. And, and I'm sorry because United fans are always like, skills, man, you stupid, you this, you that, you the hater. I'm not a hater, bro. I've been saying this for two years. Why does this guy have a job? Why, dude? Anyone who watches football can see there is no game plan, there is no game management, and the team does not play good football unless they're playing Burnsley. And unless you could play Burnsley every game of every season, get 10 out, man. Get him out, bro. And honestly, Bruno, go with him. That's crazy, bro. Round of applause, bro, for fucking A9 skills. Honestly, round of applause. I'm like, dude, this is a W video. Nine, nine minutes long of just pure facts, bro. 100%. If you guys aren't subscribed, if you guys are not here, like if you guys are new to this channel and you guys have never heard of more A9 skills or A9 skills in general, you should check him out. He's been, he was a big, uh, or he is a big, not was a big. He is a big FIFA or EAAFC content creator. And then he does like this channel on the side. Um, giving takes about certain um, games and you know around the world and I really don't understand how he gets hate like because unless the people and in, in the comments in his uh, videos are delusional and uh, just delusional like Manchester United fans like this guy is spitting straight facts bro and it need like he needs to be heard by more a lot more people a lot of people need to hear what he has to say and and the fact that he he mentioned the fact that Cristiano Ronaldo called out Ten Hag and remember when that happened like back when that happened a couple of years ago when when Cristiano Ronaldo made his return to Old Trafford he was just calling him out on his bullshit which was like damn like at the time it didn't seem like a big deal, right? Because we just thought it was Cristiano doing Cristiano type things with his ego or saying, because like, I don't think he was getting a lot of game time or he wasn't playing well, or whatever. And so we we all just thought like it, it was just a Ronaldo thing and it wasn't a Ten Hag thing, but no, Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo saw something in the club and in the environment, like what Skill said, that nobody would see or people would turn a blind eye to. And nobody acknowledged it. Nobody was... Uh, nobody, I think, is currently acknowledging this. I don't think anybody is giving it the attention that it deserves. I feel like Skills is, like, one of the only people that kind of sees this. And if you see this, I need you to comment down below so I know that you exist. Um, because this is absolutely insane. Uh, Ten Hag needs to go. I 100% agree. He is horrendous. Ten Hag needs to get fired tonight. Um, and they need to bring in somebody else uh, who can genuinely change the environment, the atmosphere, the culture of this football club.
because what they have going on right now, they are not going anywhere. They're never going to compete in European football. Uh, they're never going to win the Premier League. They're never going to have any sort of success with this manager and with this culture and atmosphere um, that they have currently at the club. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in the next one.